tips to help you lead more effectively at a smaller church. And I'm your host, Michael E. Gould, and I help worship leaders grow spiritually and practically so that they can lead worship effectively. Today, we're going to be talking about how to lead worship in a small church. And I'm going to be even giving you tips on how to lead more effectively at a small church. But before we get started, of course, I want to give you something free that I believe is going to help you to grow in your confidence, whether you're at a small church or either at a large church or mid-sized church, you still need to have confidence to lead people into the presence of God. So I'm going to give you my confident worship leader guide. In this guide, it has some tips on how to discover what's holding you back and stopping worship leaders from being confident. It's going to help you to lead powerful moments of worship in holy boldness. It's some things that I've learned over my 15 plus years of leading worship that's helped me grow in my confidence, and I want to share it with you. So all you have to do is go to my website, Michael E. Gould, G-O-U-L-D dot com slash confident worshiper. And you can be able to get this again. It's Michael E. Gould dot com slash confident worship. And you can be able to get this free guide right now. Now, with all of that being said, I want to give you some tips on how you can lead worship a little bit more effectively in your smaller church, how you can up the ante, how you can uh, uh, bring it up a notch just by doing a couple few things that will help shift the way that you lead worship. One of the things that you can do is know your strength. And this goes for all worship leaders, but especially in small churches. If you know your strengths, if you know certain songs that you can sing and lead effectively, if you know certain key signatures that you can sing in effectively, it's going to uh, minimize distractions and be able to help you to lead better. Um, you have to find songs or, or know songs that cater to your team's strengths. If you have two singers, three singers, if you have one singer, maybe it's just you by yourself, find songs that cater to your vocal strength. Um, find songs that you know that you could articulate well. Those uh, uh, that would help you to lead worship uh, well in your small church. And then don't be afraid to modify songs to fit your team. If you hear a song and you say, man, we got to do this song. This song is powerful. This song is anointed. But let's say it has harmony parts that you know that your team, unfortunately, at this time cannot do. Don't be afraid to modify those songs. Take the harmonies out or, or, or do more simpler harmonies or maybe take a verse or two out. There's plenty of times where I've been leading the song, where I've gotten a song and I say, this song is powerful, but it has too many verses. Let's take some of these verses out. It has too many harmony parts. Let's take some of these harmony parts out. And I've noticed that when you can do things to cater to your strength, it just comes off more powerfully and more effectively. And even do this with your musicians. Like if this song has an extreme intro and they're doing all the tip tricks and flips and, and musical stuff, take that stuff out. Simplify it. Make it easier. Make it uh, 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 easier for your musicians to play. Simplify. It's OK to simplify these songs to fit your worship style. Um. And then also you want to find songs that cater to your church's style. Sometimes people, they, they pick songs, they choose songs based on what they heard the big churches do, what they heard Bethel do, what they heard Maverick City sing. That may not fit your church's style. What you can do is find a song that caters to the tempo, the sound and the signature of your church and sing those songs. Remember, popular songs are not more effective than non-popular songs. The, the thing is, you want to find songs that cater to your house, 
That's what makes these songs effective, effective because they cater to the house and they uh, 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 usher us into the presence of God. Um, the next one is don't be afraid of intimate moments. When you're in a smaller church, you have the power, you have the privilege of creating authentic, intimate moments with the presence of God. Um, he says where there's two or three gathered, he'll be in the midst. So it doesn't matter if it's large or small, but when it's only two or three or less than 50 or less than 100 or 25 of you guys in the room, you have the privilege of catering, I mean, uh, of, of, of fostering a presence that a large church may not have. They don't have that advantage. So don't be afraid of the intimate moments. Actually push in and lean in to those more intimate moments. All right. Um, the next one is to use technology. Let's say you say, you know what, Mike, I want to to up the ante. I want to make us sound more fuller. Um, but unfortunately my small church doesn't have all of the money to get all of these musicians, get all of these singers. Hey, there's a no brainer. Technology has changed everything. There's so many backing tracks, loops, stems, um, Ableton live. There's so many different technologies that you can take advantage of to help your small church sound just as great as the large churches. You can put a backing track behind you, some stems behind you, a loop behind you, and you can rock your small church out just as effectively as they do in the large churches. Don't be afraid to look into technology. Don't be afraid to find different things that work for you because this can change the trajectory of how your team sounds just by adding these small little elements. Um, I lead worship at a medium sized church, I would say about 200, 250. And before then, we didn't use any backing tracks. We didn't use any loops, any stems, nothing. Um, my MD said, Hey Mike, I want to introduce something to you that I think is going to help take us to the next level. And he introduced stems and like, we only have a keyboardist and a drummer. He brought these stems. Now we've got bass. Now we've got guitar. Now we've got strings. Now we've got organ and all of that is coming from his computer, but it makes us sound like we have a, a whole 10 piece band up there. So don't be afraid to look into technology and use technology as you lead worship in your smaller church. Now, those are some tips, and I really hope that they help you and push you to lead worship more effectively in your smaller church. And remember, just because your church is smaller does not mean that it's a less effective than the larger ministries. You are just as powerful. You are just as anointed. You are just as, as cunning. You have everything that it takes to lead worship. Don't forget to download my confident worship leader guide. It's going to give you those tips and tricks to help you to be a little bit more bolder in your worship leading. I'll see you guys at the next video. Peace.